I took the first part that I showed us the biblical stand as Christa, you know, that God has for us. What is God's mind on the issue of divorce? You can go back and watch it on our Facebook page. And if you are a member, the message must have been sent to your WhatsApp page. Hallelujah. Then we started looking at, in that same service, we started looking at why some people allow conflict that later leads to divorce. And we are looking at those things that if you allow, it will become your, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you pray or not, if you allow these things, your marriage will break. My wife spoke on mistrust. When you allow the attitudes that can break trust in marriage. That what makes a couple to live together successfully and peacefully is trust. And she told us clearly that you must not allow relationship with the opposite sex that your spouse is not happy about. There's a limit. The moment you are married, there's a limit to your relationship with an opposite sex. Now we discussed, she shared with us from experience, you know, um, on you on due closeness with opposite sex. We talked about, you know, there's some kind of play that you must not allow once you are married. If you want to also ha have full details of that, you also find it on our page. Now, on my side today, I will take two points. She will come and take two points, and I will come back to round it off. Round it off. Now, what, don't forget what we are looking at. We are still looking at those things that, if you allow, will degenerate into conflict that may later lead to divorce. Let's still stand on that scripture, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 12. Let's all go there. I believe you should come to to church with Bible. Hallelujah. Nigeria has not become USSR, where you'll be arrested for holding a Bible. Now, can we read together after the count of three? I think we should stand up, honor God's word, and read this one verse together. After the count of three, one, let's all be on our feet. Except, no, don't worry, sit down. You have a baby that is sleeping on your lap. One, two, and let's go. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Wait. It shows us that it is even bad to be a simple person. Or the simple me. The Bible says a prudent man foreseeth. Now, which means one of the quality of a prudent person, a wise person, is to think ahead. Not just to think within the box. To think ahead. Let's see. What can this nature lead to? By the virtue of his prudence, the Bible says, he foresees. Ah, this thing can lead to danger if I don't stop it now. And the Bible says, what happened? He hided himself. But the simple person, now the simple person is, they don't see anything about anything. Them jump up, they just jump, they won't ask why. If you tell them sit down there, they just sit down, they don't want to find out the reason why you are telling them to sit. They just sit their life, I'm just a simple person. The Bible says, that simple man, where is the scripture? We are not yet true with it. Because he does not foresee anything. Simplicity will not allow you to foresee anything. Because he did not foresee anything, danger will just take him or her just like that. I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Please have your seats in God's presence. Amen. So I want you to see, take note of these natures we are going to be discussing. If you notice any of these things in your marriage, please settle it on time. And if you are yet to be married and you notice that you have these attitudes, please, let's work on ourselves. So let's look at from my side. I'll be speaking on the first one. One of the things that, uh, uh, sorry, one of the reasons that people allow conflict to get to the point of the divorce. The one I'm looking at now is unresolved hurts. 
and offenses. I come again. Unresolved hurts and offenses leading to a chronic state of unhappiness and depression. Let me come again. Unresolved, unresolved hurts and offenses leading to a chronic state of unhappiness and depression. Now, when we talk about unresolved hurts, you know what it means for a person to be hurt. It means that you have done something to that person. That person is feeling bad. That person is not happy. And you know in marriage, it is two people that comes together. Hello, am I communicating? Now, if you don't resolve your hearts, which means if you allow it to stay within your heart, well, I won't tell my husband or I won't tell my wife. My wife has offended me. It is paining you, but you refuse to let it out. I will show you the danger. Now, and maybe you are here too. You are either the wife or the husband. You are the type of a person you don't give your spouse the privilege or the, the, the uh, privilege is too big. Uh, the, the opportunity, it's the same thing, Sha. The opportunity to express themselves. You are cooking up something that will later destroy you. You know what they call an explosive? It's some chemicals that you compile together, lock up in a box. Once it has opportunity to see air, that's why you see that once they remove the pin, and little air just enters, explosion will take place. Thank you. He helped me to say, Dao. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, it will just explode. What we hear today on the internet, this particular person, the husband was sleeping. He just woke up in the night and she took the knife. I, I read one. The woman cut off the manhood of her husband. She, he just cut it off. The man woke up, yay, and he died. Now, most of these things are caused by what? Unresolved hearts and offenses. I always tell people, don't bottle anything that you don't like in your mind. Now, if you come to my house, this is my wife, my children are here. I run a democratic government in my marriage. Now, you know in church, we don't do democracy. That we do theocracy in church. God is the author. If he tells us, stand up and jump, we jump. But my wife and my children will not jump if you don't tell them why they need to jump. So, at home, theocracy doesn't work. At home, uh, military government doesn't work. At, you know, I did government in school, in school. What works at home is democracy. Government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, I explain to them reasons why, and I allow them to also express, talk to me. Now, that's why for 20 years, we've been living in peace. If you continue to bottle in your heart the, area, the, the things that your spouses did that hurt you, I'm telling you the fact, one day you will be shocked that your spouse will just wake up in the morning and put a letter of divorce on your table and tell you to sign it. Now, unresolved odds. Do you know that this thing is scriptural? I was reading the Bible and I saw the, the events that happened. Remember that case of uh, Amnon and Tamar? How he raped his stepsister. Do you remember in the Bible? That should be in 2 Samuel. You know, after raping his, his stepsister, the, the stepsister went to tell her direct brother. Now see, my stepbrother Amnon, he told me he was sick and that I should come and give him food with daddy's permission. And when daddy told me to go prepare food for him, I prepared food for him. While I was trying to get him to eat, he raped me. The Bible says, and Amnon, uh, sorry, Absalom was quiet. He didn't speak with anybody. Any hurt, anything that is paining you, eh, that paints your heart, that you live within your heart, will continue to expand. Now, even if something small, it will continue to expand. You know, there are some Houses like that, the man will be telling his wife, I say, shut up. Shut up. Don't say anything. Shut up. Shut up. It will continue to expand. Do you know that the Bible says Absalom was quiet. He didn't talk to anybody for two years. After two years, he just came up and told his daddy, Daddy, I want to celebrate my birthday. And I want all the king's sons to also come join me. In fact, I want my brother Amnon to join me too in that birthday. It's going to be glorious. Oh, king, if you two can come, come. The king said, you know, I'm so busy. He knew his father was busy. He knew his father would not be able to come. And he said, okay, your brother Amnon will come. 
Now, the Bible says while the party was on, he had arranged for men that would kill his, bro- kill his brother. And while the party was on, they stabbed Amnon on the chest. The Bible says they didn't need to stab him the second time before he died. He died instantly and the party ended. Now, which means that he purposely organized that party for one reason. What is that? Revenge. Unresolved hearts is the reason for several divorce. If there's anything in your marriage that is troubling you, talk about it. Now, if your spouse says there's something I want to tell you I don't like, don't feel, you know, some men are so proud. I don't know. And some women too are so cocky that even their husbands cannot express his opinion to them. Some women are so, I don't know. Now, it is wrong. If you maintain this kind of natures, it will kill your marriage. Now, these are things. I'm waiting for you to take the photograph leave me, and let me face. Uh, I've taken, I've shown you so many posters, you refuse to snap. And I want to leave where, where I'm standing. Praise the Lord. Now, I wrote here, learn to talk about it with your spouse. Learn to talk about it in your, with your spouse. Now, if your spouse is a kind of person that does not want to listen to you, I also wrote it now, involve the presence of a matured-minded elder. Now, make sure that somebody that is more mature, it could be your pastor. Oh, for instance, you heard, it happens. I have handled cases like that even in a church before. In fact, there was one that I handled of recent. A lady just walked into the home. The husband and the wife sat there in the morning, and this girl just walked in and told them, the man, the woman, your husband is the owner of the baby in my hand. Husband is the owner of the baby in my hand. The lady thought she was dreaming. Ah, I don't understand what you mean. Your husband is, my husband is what? Mbo, dear, honey, honey didn't say anything. Honey, look at what she said. Honey didn't say anything. And she cried to me. Now, when we started coming into the issue, I told the young man, he said, Pastor, uh, go see, the, you don't need to come to me. Go and sit down with your wife. If she forgives you, God will forgive you. But if she doesn't forgive you, you are not saved. One of the things that have led to several uh, uh, divorce is unresolved hearts and offenses. Now, I, I was handling one too, and we told the woman, she wanted to leave her husband. It's a member of our church too. And I asked her, why do you want to leave this man? You've been married. You are blessed with children. Both girls and boy, a male ch- a child. There is no third uh, uh, gender. It's just these two. God, uh, both, both of you have bought land together. What is happening? Why do you want to leave this man? You know what she said? He said, sir, he has not offended me by committing adultery or anything, but I'm just tired. I said, tired of what? He said, tired of suffering with him. That our marriage is going to be 11 years, sir. There have never been one day of sweetness. That is just struggling and so struggling. You see that there is no meat in the food or there is no food in the meat. <laughs> That's a, there, is, there has never been. We have always been living on people's uh, uh, contribution. Somebody will have to give me before my children will wear. Somebody will have to give us before we eat. Somebody will have to. You know, and I ask her, have you talked with your husband? Because your husband was not there. She came with her elder brother. And our elder brother said, whatever our sister is saying is what we are going to do. Pastor, whatever our sister is saying is what we are going to do. So I said, have you spoken this with your husband? He says, sir, anytime I tell him, she, he will say, am I God that put us in this condition? God didn't put you in any condition. Now listen, let me talk to the youth here. You know one of the reasons why I keep telling some of you, you don't need a relationship now. You know what I used to tell you? See, when you are young, you use your young age to build and solidify your pillars. Your foundation. You know, it is the depth of the foundation that determines the height of the building. Hello, am I communicating? Now, what should you be doing? Go to school. If your own is school path you want to follow. Build yourself in such a way that no matter what the future is bringing, you will have what it takes to meet up. And I always tell our sisters too, Gone are those days where there is what we, what we call red made us band. Where one man will just appear and begin to carry on and show all your responsibilities. Gone are those days. 
the, the generation that we are in now is you bring and I bring. Let us contribute together and make our great. Hello? So what do you do with your youth age? As a young lady, use your youth age to invest in yourself the things that will make you have the capacity to be the helper that the Bible says you are to your husband. I tried and tried and tried to talk to this lady out of this her choice. She said, Pastor, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm quitting this marriage and I'm quitting it. Now, right from the middle, when we are still trying to settle, the next thing, the husband just called me and gave me a letter that they sent from the court. Her, his wife has gone to the court to seek for divorce. That's how this is the letter she, she just sent to me. I don't know. So what is happening to me? It's like I'm dreaming. Am I dreaming? I say you are not dreaming. But it's, the thing is that you did not pay attention to the things you were supposed to pay attention to when they were still easy for you to undo. Unresolved hearts is one of the reasons for divorce today. Now, do you know that this was the same thing that happened? That was how Abner lost his life. You remember Abner? Abner is the army general of Israel. During battle days, he killed the brother of Joab. But battle have ended. Joab did not forget. They didn't discuss it. That, okay, okay, let's talk. Let's talk over the death of your They didn't say anything. After many years, Abner just saw Joab coming. And Abner said, ah, Joab, my friend. Uh -uh. We didn't discuss the death of my brother now. Joab, my friend. He was going with an open arm. Joab was coming with a dagger beside. As he embraced Joab, the Bible says he pierced him in the stomach. That was how he died. Now, everyone that will enjoy marriage, hear me, you must have what we call listening ears. If your spouse is telling you, I am hot, male or female, husband or wife, listen. Ude shemio, ude dumio, Calm down. Don't say so. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't say, hey, it's okay, so long, so long. It's okay, so long, so long. It's okay, so long, so long. It's okay, so long, so Ah, my God, you're okay, so Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. Praise the Lord. Listen, you cannot underestimate the terrible things a hot person can do. Ah, when a person is hot, they can do terrible things. I love wrestling. I want to try to remember his name. He's dead now. He was hot. He suspected that the children that his wife brought home were not his. And he has raised these children. He now suspected. You know, got some information that these children are not his biological children. If I remember his name, I'll tell you. He was a popular wrestler. You know what he did? He came back home with a gun shot the two children in the presence of the wife. Shot the wife and now shot himself. Why did he do that? He was hot. When a person is hot, they can do anything. That's why in marriage, what should I, what did I say you should de develop? Develop a listening ear. I wrote here, great sorry, create time in your family to discuss your hearts. In fact, Develop a listening ear in that area. It is also important to go, you know, to go, uh, 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 so, sorry, to, to let go. Before we talk about let go, let's talk about create time first. Create time. Even when my children are saying something annoys them, I listen. Okay, come, tell us what is happening. In your last case, you know, he's the youngest in the family. When he's hot, he cries. <laughs> He doesn't want to cry. I say, come, come, come. What happened? He will now burst in tears. Tell me what happened. <laughs> I, I, want, I, want, I want to eat. Tell me, just calm down. What happened? That's why I say the best form of government that will allow any marriage to last is democracy. These ones that our fathers in those days did. That they look at women and look at women like property. Why should I be talking and you are talking? It doesn't work. That you sit and you cross your leg. No, it doesn't work. Create time. Now, and when I say create time, as the man come low, as the woman open up, 
At times, some men don't like it when you wind them. You want to tell them that uh, something, you did something that is wrong, you now go to Sokoto, you go to Jos, you go to Calabar, you are now coming back to Maduguri before you now want to use that. No, 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 no. Come straight and let him know that he hurts you. Am I communicating? I wrote here also, it is also important to let go whenever your spouse apologizes to you over it. Listen, in marriage, the moment you are married and you have been hurt, you express your heart and your spouse open his or her mouth to say, yeah, and I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. Let go. I was talking to one pastor. Ah, this pastor went to the point of his wife hurt him. Oh. The wife really hurt him. I must tell you the truth. Now, they have a joint business together. Learn from this. A joint business together. You know, the wife was the person in charge of the business. The man was always coming around, you know, as the head. Okay, I paid, I bought so so and so so. Paid this person. So this particular day, the mother of the uh, of the wife was uh, was around. She didn't know that it was a joint business. She didn't know. She thought that it was her daughter's business and her daughter's money. So the husband just came over and said, "Sweetheart, please give that person so and so money." The mother just stood up and said, "Why do you not take your own money? Why don't you take your own money?" Must it always be my daughter, my daughter, my daughter every time? The man now got offended. I know what he said. He's a man of God. He said, I declare that my grace leaves this business. He had to call you. Grace, if your business is the business crashed. He said, he now calls himself and says, if I ever take one naira, from your hand in this business, may I die? See, don't get to that point. Learn to let go. Am I communicating? Now, once you get your spouse to apologize, let go. Even the God we serve, the Bible says, does not keep record of what? Of sin. If God does not keep record of sin, why should you? So once your spouse is able to say, I'm sorry, you know why you need to let go? If you don't let go hurt, you will eventually become a beast. Some will say, I saw my husband with my friend. See, when you see things like this, don't bottle it. Express it. And you too, the man or the woman, they want to express. They are saying, ah, leave me alone, leave me alone. Am I not? They will kill you. Are you learning something? So once they apologize, let it go. Let it be over. Because holding on to hearts, like I said, will turn you into a monster. Let me take number two from my own point. Before mama will come up. Another thing that can lead to divorce, if allowed, is what I call violence in marriage. We are either or one of the two parties in marriage choose violence and sharp abusive words to resolve conflicts. I want you to take note of this very well. Violence in marriage is when we are, sorry, either one of the two parties in marriage chooses violence or sharp, abusive words to resolve conflict. You know what they call sharp, abusive words? You look at your spouse, either male or female, and you are saying, I don't know how useless you are. Did they send you into my life to destroy my destiny? It's too expensive. It will get to a point that person will not be able to take it again. These things that so many, listen, and listen, do you know where this problem came from? It came from you, so many parents. I was telling my children yesterday that you know that academic brilliance is not equal to character. Some of your children are very brilliant. And because they are brilliant, you refuse to culture them. You refuse to cultivate them. So they are growing wings. 
You know, he's, a, he's brilliant. She's brilliant. Academic brilliance is not equal to good character. Understand that clearly. Now, and because these children, these children were not trained. Parents, you have work to do. Train your children on how to talk from childhood. Train them on how to rest, how to hear things from childhood. Train them on how to spend from childhood. These are things that if you don't teach them from childhood, it will become a problem. In my tribe, we used to say, Atikeke, Latin Shekini, Latin Pae, Ka, Yeroko. One in Toba Dagba, Tomba Mepali, and last week, E Bolu Mamagba. There are some children, they were not taught from home on how to talk. So they grew up with this. When they get married, you see the way they talk. They talk as if their spouse doesn't exist. She will lock all on. Young words like that. She will lock all on. Kill the vessel. 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 Ah, it's too expensive. We are showing you the things that lead to divorce. They brought some cases to my table like this. Ah. In fact, every all those cases, I use it to work on my own children. Some people's mouth is too caustic. It was a, a babaka kaki. I gave him one secretary, one of our members. He said, Pastor, this your member is too caustic. Her tongue is too caustic. Ah, ah, mobile dictionary. Mama Tivan, two men, you but one you to enu and Nikki Kerry. Terry, you may not of your mamma and Nuyen, a modada, a lumi one, Motier, who sorrow to you, the Jadi Lenway. It's wrong. One thing with humans is that we have limits to what we can think. If we get to a point, if a person cannot think it anymore, even a goat, they told us in Proverbs now that if you chase a goat that will run from you, so, and you keep chasing, and a goat gets to the wall, and it does not see any other way. It will come back and face you. Then you'll be shocked. Ah, uh-uh. goat, see, you face me. What will now happen? You will run. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. So this too is one of the uh, reasons people divorce today. I wrote here, if you find yourself in this kind of marriage, it is important you shout out for help. That's the first thing. You find yourself in this kind of marriage, your spouse is violent, your spouse responds to you with sharp, abusive words. Don't bottle it. Shout out. Somebody please help. During the week, you know, I don't know. Maybe because of my kind of heart. The school, we run a school at Elebu. I was invited by one of the parents to come and settle conflict. Ah! I now ask myself, am I a proprietor or a pastor? Is it both? They are not members of our church. When the moment I got there, they say, Pastor, buy me be the law where? She won't feel me. She won't be me feel me. I will love where? Kama iti soro meji. Igbaju ni kosa. And when the man was to respond, Another parent now coming. Ah, uncle Eti Loni, ah, Muluda, and Gia Omeji, one Bala, one Murala, a Mitilo, Eba, one Now, the question is, what was she looking at to marry that kind of a person? Look up, church, especially our ladies. Don't use your love to compensate anybody. Some of you will say, ah, and he has been so nice to me. Let me use my body. Let, him, let me allow him to have sex with me. One. Some will say, let me marry him as a way of compensation. I've told you, it is in courtship you will decide who you want to marry. If you are not satisfied 
with that person's character. You know what you marry in character? You don't marry sex, you marry character. You don't marry money, you marry character. Let that person have 10 billion. If he does not have the character you need, don't say yes. I wrote in my book, 10 wrong reasons. People make the wrong choice in marriage. I said some people make the wrong choice because they will say, I already have a child. Having a child is not equal to marriage. You know, you know why I fled that uh, on Friday? When I saw the two couples, I don't know how to talk with them. Because the man faced me by saying, Look, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I now face you, my boy. I can't pull it back on you. Lie. Ah. Can you move on, Shimbi? So, if you are in that kind of a marriage, you are here in this church, please shout out before it leads to uh, death or anything. Let me round up. So, I wrote here talk to your pastor and look for temporary separation. It temporary separation. That's the first thing. After you must you have spoken with your pastor, your pastor can tell you go your separate ways for a while. Brother, go and live on your own. Sister, go and live on your own. Until that person matures enough, I was preparing a message. Maybe at the course of the t- teachings through uh, this, uh, I don't know if we extend it to next month. I was preparing the qualities of a man. That should be a husband, and the qualities of the woman that should be a wife. I was writing them down. See, one of the things that makes a man a man is the ability to lead a woman without applying force. If you cannot lead a woman without the application of force, you are not yet ready to be a husband. To bali dari ubiri la ilui pa o ti dokuni. Bitch, yeah, it's okay. Bitch, yeah, it's okay. Monico, bitch, yeah, it's okay. It didn't do any. Bitch, yeah, it's okay. That's false. But you know who the men are? The men understands that. The gateway to any woman's heart is what? If you can talk to them honorably, a woman will follow you. And what does it take to become the woman that will become a good wife? You must understand submission before you go into marriage. If you don't understand submission before you go into marriage, you will mess up marriage. All this one that you say, eh, okay, okay, oh she tell me, no, she tell me, oh she tell me, you want no man on me, you know, my moment, I mean, I do my part, be any. You are not a wife. Let's leave that. When we get there, I have so many things in the cooler, but there's no enough time. I'm running off now. Listen, in this kind of marriage, hear me. You don't need patience. You need to run. In this kind of marriage, you don't need what? Oti noe, want the bandage we wait here, and want the boy walk by the Ah, mommy lag by the Emma she suru ni, suru le man ni kwe luwe. Emma she suru ni. Kusi bandage lori ti wo. But once of my people she, you don't need endurance in this kind of marriage. Only let the best say already. Hallelujah. Finally, under it, inferiority complex is the reason people apply violence and sharp abusive words in marriage. If you go down, anyone that's applying force, eh, that is using sharp abusive words, go and find out that man or woman is feeling inferior. So it's now looking at what can I do to control this woman? And I always say it in marriage, you don't control. If you believe that as a man, 
have to control the woman. You are yet to understand the concept called marriage. And you too as a woman too. You don't, you don't lord over. Now, when I was asking what caused the conflict of the couple I went to settle that I had to run away, the man said, Eba mi biri lowe, she wele in sheni. Ma ke fo mi sile. A de lo ma mu nomba won biri to wa nbe. A wa pe fa won re. Wa ma won ipe fun won. So she ele ni. Can you see the woman's problem too? You know what I told the woman when I was going? I said you are not busy. You are not busy. Te ba ja de la aro te lo shishe te kwa da de la le. O ne la ye. But see, if you notice that you are in a relationship, you are, you are married, I'm talking to the married now, and your spouse has multiple partners, hear me, and you are sure, what do you do? It's part of the reasons why you should give space. You know why you should give space? Because of infectious diseases. Who knows? Out of his multiple partners, he could go bring something home. And the medics will, will tell us that sexually transmitted disease spread faster in women than in men. Let me rest my case a little bit here. Let's welcome Mama as she comes forward. Clap, 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 clap. That's my wife, boy, if you don't know. Praise God. Praise the mighty Jesus. Now, let me quickly run through the first point on what normally leads to uh, divorce. The first point I raised was uh, mistrust. And, uh, and I said it's lack of trust or confidence to suspect someone. And uh, Papa came back and uh, put more magi and uh, salt on it. You know, you want your wife to trust you to the man. Anytime she wants to help you to wash your, your clothes or something, she finds out they are condom and uh, unused condom. Some of us say, I only want to do it so that I want to show her so that she will feel jealous that somebody is outside. You are actually trying to scatter your marriage. You want to test her. You're already pushing her out. Please, let's stop all these uh, uh, games that will not lead us anywhere. So, on, under the mistrust, let's try as much as possible to, to do what we are expected to do as a couple. And to all the singles, please, open your eyes. And secondly, Papa came up and said, unresolved odds and offenses also lead to divorce. Then the third one, he talks about violence in marriage. Then I will be talking about the fourth point, childlessness. It's the number four thing that can cause divorce. And then, so many find it difficult to handle. But I will bring to us some points from the scriptures and also from live experience on how to undo it. Though it's not easy to be childless as a woman and even as a man. Do you understand? Because in Africa, they believe when a couple does not have a child yet, they believe it's the fault of a woman. They say, maybe she has uh, uh, tamper with her womb. That's why she is unable to bear children. But nobody looks towards the husband. Somebody will say, it's women that used to have problems. No. In this uh, teaching concerning marriage, we, will, we want you to understand that the two, it takes two to tango. 
So we should forget about uh, the blaming game. It should be the woman. He's the man. I mean, he's the woman. You know, we don't even talk about the man. In this, our, our part, everybody faced the woman. They would say, she is the one. She should go and look for the solution. But we are here this afternoon, this morning stroke afternoon, to let us understand that we can help ourselves. We can undo the issue and help ourselves. Instead of allowing this to lead us you know, to divorce ourselves, we can handle it. And if you have anybody very close to you, you know, facing this kind of a challenge, you can be of help. With this teaching, God can use you for them. I read the scripture. There are two women in the Bible that face similar challenges, which is childlessness. The first one is in the book of Genesis chapter 16, verse 1, about Sarah. Genesis 16, verse 1. And when I read that place, I, I discovered that the way she undo her childlessness was different from the one in the book of Kings, chapter 4. There's another woman there in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. The way she to undo her own issue was, a, was different. And we'll look at the two of them to the world. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says Sarah was barren. She got married to Abraham that God gave promises to. But she was, she was barren. And the Bible says she came up with an idea and said to the man, Daddy, can you go in to my maid and uh, let's start having children from her? Do you know the funniest part of it? The man said, no problem. We'll go ahead. And the two of them did the same and uh, she conceived. And after the whole issue, blah, 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 so many things came after. And also, I read the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. It's about the Shunammite woman. The Bible says she called her husband. I noticed a servant of God is passing by. Can we make a room for him? At the course of them taking care of the servant of God, the servant of God called the woman. What do you want me to do for you? And the woman said, I don't need anything. I'm okay. I'm comfortable. I'm well to do. God bless me and my husband. In our businesses, we are doing well. But the man of God said, so what can I do? He said, nothing. It was the servant of the, of the prophet that said she had no child. Do you see the difference between two of them? She was hopeful with the man, even with the promises. God did not give them any promises. You remember, they are just an ordinary person. But they, they perceive that the servant of God that is passing can be of help to them. And two of them do what? They welcome the servant of God. But the second woman, which is Sarah, that had the prophecies and the promises of God, misused the opportunity by pushing her husband outside. Let's go and try it outside. And at the end of the day, that is the problem we are having all over the world today. So, undo the childlessness. I'm talking to any of us, or all those of us listening to us on the internet. Undo it with care. Some people have allowed the situation of childlessness to affect their relationship with their spouse. Beloved, we should learn as a couple to fight our situation, you know, uh, not uh, uh, ourselves. We should fight the situation, not ourselves. Emma Baranija, fight the situation. What is the cause of us not having a child yet? At least for three years into my marriage, I too was waiting. I got mar married as a virgin. It too was, there was nothing like that. So we were not fighting ourselves because maybe you are the cause of it, Pastor. Oh, Pastor MC, you are the cause of it because they made me as a child of God. No, on, your, on some of us, it may not be like that, but please, let's stop fighting on the, on, I mean, with ourselves. But let's face the, 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 the issue. Look at, look at Sarah. She went to the man and said, can you please Sleep with my, 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 my maid. So let's start having children from her. That's the wrong counsel. This, you know, you, at the end of the day, both Sarah and Adam, I mean, and Abraham, they started fighting because Edgar came up with the kind of reaction. She was hungry. This is not rub this is rubbish. And this, but the other woman can do it in such a way that she was the one who later carried the pregnancy. Do you know that after some time, God answered Sarah, but it was late. Face the situation. 
not yourselves. Stop fighting yourself. Oh, the, the, the root of the problem, is, not, is it not you? Is it not because you asked me to do this or that? No, but how to come out of the problem? When you notice you, you, you have this kind of a case, what should you do as a couple? The first thing you should do, find out first the case of your childlessness. Why do we not have a child yet? What is going on with us? And we wrote here, we said, find out from a professional. Stop fighting your spouse. Let's go and ask, what is going on? Why are we yet to have a child? Instead of saying, oh, 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 oh my, mo my mommy is coming with her and house or with another lady. See, your problem you will soon expose. Something happened, one of our friends, we, he was always very close to us. Some of our old members will, will remi remember him. He got married. This, he too was late already before he got married. And when two of them come together, they started having issues. It was after the divorce that they came up and uh, we started hearing different stories. They say hey, she is the, the problem. She is the one because she has given birth to a child before. That's why we, are, we, 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 we have no child yet. And that's the reason why I've decided in my heart, I'm not going to marry her again. I want to change as a pastor. Do you know they, they scatter, they separated. As I was preparing, as I said there, I just remember, she, he got married to another woman. Up to now, they are yet to have a child. Whose fault is it? Is he not the one? You know, everybody was after the woman. Hey, maybe because she has uh, ruptured her womb, she has done this and that. Maybe that's the reason why they could not have. Do you know now, this is the third year we are hunting. I was asking my husband, I've not seen anything inside the auntie, the new mama in the Lord. Nothing. Definitely, the former woman, <laughs> it's true now, the former mama, nothing was wrong with that. She's not the old, because I kept telling my husband, I said, this man is the, the, the one with the problem. Everybody is facing the woman now. And I told my husband, I am not going to relate with him and the new wife. They tried everything. Hey, maybe I say me. I know the first wife. We joined them. I can never go with the second one. Because of not having children. Let's see after three years. And now it has shown. So please stop fighting yourself. Fight the situation. Go and look for those who can help you. During my own time, we started praying. We went as far to so many doctors. One of them said, hey, hey she, you are the problem. You are the one having problem. I, my husband laughed and said, is telling me that you are the pro, you have problem. I said, let's look for another place. At the cost of it, they gave us a gift. I could remember. Just like the Shunammite woman, the gift they gave us, I told my husband, let's go and use it to build. He said, but they gave you a test. Uh, what do you call it? They gave me a paper that should run some tests. And the equivalent amount I'm to use for the test is what we, that is needed in the church to build that place at Adeniji. And I told my husband, can we convert the money to it? Go and use it and let's wait and see what God will do. Not that instantly God answered the prayers. No! It was when we, I think, there was, it was one of our pastors that was preaching that day. And he come up and said we should ask God for direction. We prayed and prayed. And it was in my dream they showed me what I would do. Do you know? I did not see anything. No. It was after the fourth month. I noticed I was pregnant. We, you fight the situation, not yourselves. Not that, ah, uh, it's because you have time for other women. And so, so many of our sisters come around there, they want him to cancel them. I am not hungry for him canceling, you know, it was for after the canceling. I will not say, because you don't have time for me, that's why we, we, yet, we are yet to have a child. Forget about the fighting aspect. Go out, two of you, and look for solution on how to have your own children. I won't waste time here. Let me quickly rush through what we have here. You need to find out the source of the problem so that you can know the kind of situation you, I mean, the solution you need. 
And this is why it is important for you not to deceive anyone into marrying you. Yes, this is very important. The moment your spouse is aware you have a, a problem in, 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 um, related to that area, he will not trust you again. He will believe you are the one at fault. Talk to each other as you are having relationship, as in on the way. Let the person know. I could remember then I told him when we were about to get married. I said for some time I noticed because I fasted to the extent then I was, you know, I told you I gave I gave my life to Jesus when I was eleven. I fasted and I my menstrual flow stopped. It ceased finally before I got married. Monthly flow ceased before I even say I want to get married to my husband. So we as we are about to, to you know to go to the registry, I told him I have this issue. This is the problem I'm having presently. I said, You remember they asked me to go to Lagos. This is the problem. They said so so so, so thing is happening. He said, eh, eh, there is no problem. Let's see how we can we can pray and God will answer us concerning it. Do you know that? God is, ever, is faithful. I didn't see the menstrual flow. Eh? Even after a year, I gave birth to my first daughter. How did God work it out? Because we discuss it. We pray along. Don't deceive anybody and say, when we get married, you will understand. You know you have issues. So that I will not lay lay. Husband no, will say, so that she will not go and marry another person. Let me cover it so that at least when we get married, we'll be solving it. It can lead to divorce. Don't deceive anybody. I told him everything that, that happened. See, oh, after that biri biri that we normally do in our church, me, I know they see my prayer again, you know. He doesn't say, eh, eh. We'll work it out. We'll pray about it and we'll go and ask for help. Do you know in my dream, that was the, the, the drugs that they gave me in my dream, that they said it will flush out whatsoever is disturbing you and God answer our prayer. And that's the truth. Now we are begging ourselves, please. Osito, we don't want to have children again. That's God. So please, let's undo it with wisdom. Talk to whosoever you are into relationship with. So you can get help on time. Don't let this, your family tear apart because of childlessness. It can be solved. And you will see that if two of you should come together and discuss it, there will be a way house. And I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice today, that in any way you are being delayed, you know, being challenged, I pray the Lord will come and answer you speedily in the name of Jesus. There shall be testimony in your families in Jesus' name. To the next one. The next one, number D-E. Let's talk about long separation. Long separation too can cause divorce. Long separation can cause divorce. Because when one spouse travel and live in another country and the other is unable to join for maybe because of document sake and because of your own job, you stay here. One of the reasons that our friend, you know, uh, had uh, experienced divorce is because the wife is in Chokoto, the husband is in Kafansha, and uh, that was what really caused the problem. So, if there are distance between you and your spouse, see, and if it's getting too long, there is no how it's only to divorce me. Some of us get it wrong when Papa say, ah, the moment your husband or your wife says, I want to travel to so and so thing, so because I want to go and look for greener pastor, he say you should just zero your and say bye to the man or the woman. Go and look for how you can continue your life. If you keep waiting, you are yet to get married or you are married. You know, I've seen a situation. Sister and brother, they got married on Saturday. The husband traveled on Monday. And since that time, for 10 years, he has not returned. And she's still waiting. If you look at the auntie, she's older than her age. And no, we should not deceive ourselves. Getting there, there must be something the man will have to do. I don't know whether you are getting me, but we as a lady here who say we believe God. God will bring him. God will bring him. I told you, I met somebody recently, 
and we were both discussing. Your husband lives in America. She's here in Nigeria. And I told you, during the first one, the mistrust, when I discussed it, the first point, anywhere we are, eh, and the, our phone should start ringing like this. Maybe we are busy doing one thing or the other. She's unable to pick the call. Wait for, in the next 15 minutes, messages will start coming. Bra, bra, bra. I know you have not, you, 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 you know that you cannot pick up where you are. You have engaged yourself in so, 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 thing. so many questions. She will start reading and she will be sharing tears. I say, why are you crying? He said, because the man doesn't trust me. And me here, I'm waiting for him for the past three years. He's, he's sending all this rubbish. Do you know the pains I'm going through for waiting for him? I say, oh, then you know. Any document you are preparing and you don't involve me, what is the essence? I am not important to you then. Because you are enjoying yourself. And I ask her, vividly, I look at her face, tell me that you don't know that the man is married there. He says she knows, so why are you crying? Why are you crying? So, long separation too can cause divorcement. And if you don't want it, why do you allow it at the first place? So, this, uh, this too can give ground for the devil to operate. Since we live in the flesh, your body would demand for heat. We are not spirits. When there is a, you know, by the time we started discussing, I discovered that inside her heart, she was not happy. She knows that the relationship is not leading anywhere. And they already, they have kids before the man left. The man came, he took two of the children and left one with her to monitor her. And at the end of the day, there was a, um, uh, when I say a few days ago when we were discussing, she was on phone. And the next thing, the man said, what of the clinical I send you to go and do? What I say, you have become an errand girl. You are crying. You have no choice. You keep crying and be waiting. Now, he came and took the two children, and you are left behind. For what? She now start, she decided that she would start doing that. See, too long separation from your spouse can lead to divorcement because you will be tired. And you as a child of God, you'll be saying, I don't want to fall. She, that's what she was saying. You don't want to fall. I said, you will fall. 